your seat and you probably can't see. Uh, will you go back and turn on this front light, please? No. Right. Thank you. I'd like to be able to sing some of the hymns. The Being Good Maronite Ceremony, it's all hymns. <laughs> we'll just we'll sing with our normal tone. Nope, wrong one. Yeah, go. that's good. good. Yeah. Thank you. All right, so you'll be you'll be one. So you'll because when it says like side one, side two, do two more people through, go four people go over there and you'll be more evenly divided. Just four people. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Excellent. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Make us worthy, O Lord God, to light the lamp of our souls with the oil of charity, like the wise virgins. To await you, O heavenly bridegroom, anxiously and vigilantly, to enter in your company, your kingdom filled with joy. We will offer glory and thanksgiving to you, to your Father and to your Holy Spirit forever. on us, O Lord, and assist us, O harbor of salvation and port of safety. You are the lighthouse that draws us to you with the abundance of your light above the stormy seas of this world. Enlighten us with the splendor of your face in your kingdom to come, where peace and harmony reign. We offer glory to you, your Father and your Holy Spirit forever. Amen. So
strangers to friends, lovers to fight and brought nations together. Praise to the Father, who is gracious to us, to the Son, who saves us, and to the Spirit, who brings life to our celebration. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. He grants the Father and his blessed He came to rescue us from darkness and to fill us with the radiance of his the light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. He is dawning upon us. The power of darkness is fading away. From the true light there arises for us the light which illumines our darkened eyes. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. His glory shines upon the world and enlightens the very depths of the abyss. Death is annihilated, night has vanished, and the gates of Sheol are broken. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. Creatures lying in darkness from ancient times are clothed in light. The dead arise from the dust and sing because they have a Savior. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. He brings salvation and grants us life. He ascends to his Father on high. He will return in glorious splendor and shed his light on those gazing on the light of the just and the joy of the upright is Christ Jesus our Lord. The light of the just and the joy of the upright is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Parakmor. Have mercy on us, O Lord, and assist us, O Lord, on the day that we meet you. Do not extinguish the lights of our lamps. O heavenly bridegroom, fill our lamps with the oil of your divine love, that we may remain with you until the end. You are our Lord and God, to you be glory forever. Amen. we come to find a refuge, a harbor of safety from the sea of evil. O Lord, keep your door wide open in the face of those who knock. There is no safety for us besides the safety of your house. Alleluia. O Lord, with your cross, shield your church and her children. Your grace brought them together in blessed Christ to praise you. With the robe of glory, bless them. 
from the evil one deliver them and as a true inheritance grant them your eternal kingdom A light to my feet is your word, a light to my path. A light to my feet is your word, a light to my path. A light to my feet is your word. So once you're in your place, you may sit. And this, to my left, to the right side of the church will be one. The left side of the church will be congregation two. So we'll use the same melody that we've been singing. So side one. Bring your lambs, brothers and sisters, the day of the Lord has dawned on us. In the shadow of his Eden of light, he rewards generously those who have lived in justice. O Lord of truth to the just ones, open the door of the garden of delights. Let them meet you in the radiance of light with their praise and their guitars. The light of our Savior has appeared. Blessed are those who awaited him. For those who place their hope in him, the Lord of glory prepared a crown of glory. He comes to satisfy their thirst Yet they tremble at his encounter. Oh, how Lord was the night of their awaiting. Oh, how they long for the name of the coming one. On that day, the greatest of days, all secrets of the heart are revealed. When you come, O oh Lord, Grant us to meet you with the love of a consumed heart. Please stand for the Husoyo. Stomen kalos.
But if more of the holy land, the praise, glory, and honor of the most holy trinity, the burnless incense. Here it is. May we be worthy to offer praise, glory, and honor to the wise Creator, who in His grace brought everything into existence. To the mighty Savior, who humbled Himself for our salvation because of His love for us. To the harbor of safety, in whom the weary ones found rest for their souls, to the calming peace who liberated people from the heavy burdens of the law, to the just one who assumed our nature of sinners in order to save us, to the physician who in his compassion tended the sick and cured them. To the good one, glory and honor are due at this moment and all the days of our lives and forever. <clears throat> o God, you are the eternal light who enlightened all creatures with the rays of your revelation. You created us in your image. You filled us with the gift of your Holy Spirit. When we had disobeyed your command, we were chased from the abode of life and exiled from your paradise. In your eternal mercies, you had compassion upon us and sent your only Son for our salvation. In his saving and life-giving plan, he showed us the way of life to follow. He became for us a safe guide to the true light. He handed us a new command, the command of love, the yoke of humility and peace of conscience. In this we found absolute peace for our soul. O Lord, with joyful hearts and peaceful consciences, we walk according to the command you gave us, and with illumined minds we give you thanks. We hold our lamps in our hands and we take off our old self and following your example, we put on the new one. We radiate with your illuminating teachings and we cross from darkness to the eternal light you promised us. With the prophet David, we cry out, saying, During the day we are enlightened by your teachings, and at night we walk behind you as a column of fire. Our minds and thoughts are enlightened by you as we do deeds of justice. You have made us worthy to accept the life-giving passion of your only Son, who became for us the harbor of salvation. With the wise virgins, we meet you with lighted lamps, filled with the oil of good deeds. Instead of the fading lamps which we hold now in our hands, in your glorious kingdom you will light the lamps of our souls with the oil of charity, purity of heart, 
since serenity of conscience and with complete freedom. We will offer glory to you, to your only Son and to your Holy Spirit, now and forever. the radiance of that day. of mercy and compassion in your abundant generosity and eternal kindness. You comfort those who grieve, who suffer and who seek refuge in you. O harbor of safety and salvation, through this incense we now offer you be a support and a savior to all those who came in true faith to the harbor of your holy church. As we commemorate your saving passion for us, we offer glory to you forever. Amen. You can put up your candles. So you know this melody. Dun, da, 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 dun, dun. All things hidden will, will be revealed. All kinds of secrets will be known. What was said in secret, proclaim it in loud voice. What was darkness will become light for you. All days and nights I meditate upon a world and A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Hebrews. Glory to the Lord of Paul and the Apostles. May the mercy of God descend upon the reader, the listeners, and upon this parish, and your children forever. Therefore, let us leave the elementary doctrines of Christ and go on to maturity, not laying again a foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, with instruction about baptisms, the laying of hands, the resurrection of the dead, and the eternal kingdom. And this will do if God permits. For if, if it is impossible to restore again to repentance those who have once been enlightened, who have tasted the heavenly gift, and have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, and have rested the good, had tasted the goodness of the word of God and the powers of the age to come, if they then commit apostasy, since they crucify the Son of God on their own account and hold him to contempt. 
For the land which has drunk the rain that often falls upon it and brings forth vegetation useful to those whose sake it is cultivated, receiving a blessing from God. But if it bears thorns and thistles, it is worthless and near to being cursed. Its end is to be burned. Though we speak thus, yet in your case, beloved, we feel sure of better things that belong to salvation. Praise be to God always. Alleluia. Alleluia. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Let us prepare and come out to me. Before the proclamation of the gospel of our Saviour announcing life for our souls, we offer this incense and ask for your mercy, O Lord. Shlomo el kolukhuna Let us be attentive to the gospel of life and salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded by the Apostle Matthew. The Apostle Matthew writes, Then he left them, and he went out of the city to Bethany, where he spent the night. And early the next morning, as he was returning to the city, he was hungry. And noticing a fig tree by the side of the road, he went over to it, but found nothing on its branches except leaves. Then he said to it, May you never bring forth fruit again. And instantly the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples witnessed this, they were stunned. And they asked, How could that fig tree wither away in an instant? And Jesus answered them, Amen, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, not only shall you do what has been done to this fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be lifted up and thrown into the sea, it shall be accomplished. Whatever you ask for within faith, you shall receive. And when he entered the temple and began to teach, the chief priests and the elders of the people approached him, and they asked, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? But Jesus said to them in reply, I will also ask you one question. If you give me an answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. From whence did John's baptism originate? From heaven or from men? And they argued among themselves, if we say from heaven, he will then say to us, then why did you not believe him? But if we say from men, 
We are afraid of the people, for they all regard John as a prophet. And therefore they answered Jesus, we do not know. And Jesus said to them, then neither shall I tell you by what authority I do these things. This is the truth, peace be with you. Never bring forth fruit again. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. So it is always lovely to see you when you appear on this. This is one of our Syriac treasures. We have a number of them. It doesn't correspond to anything in the Latin church. Too bad for them. We have these gems throughout the Holy Week. This, the anointing the rite of the lamp on Wednesday evening, the right of forgiveness on Saturday, a treasure which very few people have availed themselves. But these are the treasures that add to this contemplation of our Lord's passion. And of course, beautifully, you see this transition that we have with our candles, with the moving of the lamp towards our Lord. And you also see in this gem of a ceremony that the day of judgment is not something that's in fear, Think about all the stupid television shows and movies that have been made in the last 20 years about apocalypse and zombies and the end of the world and catastrophe. In the Syriac church, that catastrophe is not a catastrophe. The apocalypse means an unveiling. The word itself, we translate it in English as revelation. It is something that we look forward to. Our Lord said that I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. If you notice in our prayers this morning, we had that contrast between you who are on the throne of your eternal glory chose to be praised by children, little kids. You who ride upon the chariot of the cherubim rode in your first coming upon a donkey in our midst. This contrast between what God is truly in his majesty, in hidden divinity, and what he chose to do in his first coming. But his second coming, this day of judgment, our Lord is the harbor of salvation. Because on that day he will reveal himself in his full splendor as of who he is. That's why the beautiful contrast that we have in the Husoyo for Palm Sunday are very striking because they're reminding us that this man was just kind of clumping down in the midst of these crowds on Palm Sunday. That this man is truly the man, is the word of glory. This is truly the infinite one from whom all things come. You see them spoken of, the peace that is given, the gift. Everything comes to the question of gift. This word grace that we always talk about, grace is something which can be known, we can describe in many ways, but it's not something that's really definable because it's the extension of the hand of God to us, the intelligent creatures, to enter into his personal intimacy of his life, of friendship. It's not a question of whether I'm bad or good or whatever. It's a question of love, to enter into a divine friendship. And a friend doesn't stand there and say, oh gee, did I offend you yesterday? Oh, I don't know what we're doing. The friend runs towards the individual that is beloved. A friend finds the other friend you love. And yes, in human affairs, we screw up on occasion and we do our mea culpa before them and then we hug and then we go off and have dinner. Friendship is always a movement towards the beloved. That's what this ceremony means this movement towards the one who extends the hand, this thing that we call grace. And it's why the definition of hell, the definition of hell is separation 
That's all Sheol is. It's separation. And so what grace is doing is asking, do you desire to enter into this love, this friendship with me, or do you desire to be separate? This is why the whole imagery of the wise virgins and the foolish virgins and the lighted lamps of our good works, of the oil of the expression, not because they're good works and we're being judged and measured out in this way, but the oil of our good works, meaning the things that we desire to do for the beloved, that is the vision of good works in Christianity. And the Syriac church has just clung to this image of the day of judgment, the day of our Lord's appearance in his full glory, in apocalypse. And it's precisely because the world is not disposed to receive that love because it has chosen not to receive that love amongst intelligent beings in many cases, and also because the natural world itself has been wounded by the sins of humanity, and it can't fix its situation. It has to wait for that moment that the Creator appears in the fullness of His person, of who He is, to bring life, that I have come to bring life, that they may have it more abundantly. That that whole imagery of that revelation is why when God manifests himself unveiled, apocalyptically, the world goes in the convulsions. Those are the effects of being separated from God. But those who have loved in response for love for love, there's nothing else that they desire than that day. It is like death. Death for those who love God. St. Paul says in his letter, I can stay here and I can work among you. For you it'll be a gain. But for me, death is the gain and to be with Christ. Not that he wants death in the sense of pain or suffering. But I'm shackled down here. And this isn't the reason why I'm existed. My existence is to enter into the divine light. And so that movement towards the day of judgment And so this one ceremony of the coming into the harbor expresses very explicitly what we see continually in our anaphoras, this reference to the day of judgment, this reference to the return of our Lord, this reference to our Lord's second coming. Because in the interim, we don't see the full face of the beloved. We don't enter into the harbor of salvation. And for that reason, our love can become cold. You spend a long time away from people. It doesn't mean we lose love, but we're not communicating with them. Our desire is to be with the one who is beloved. And so this whole question of grace, being in the state of grace, just means being in the state of friendship with God. Not a question of navel-gazing or anything else. It just means, do I desire to receive from God and to respond to this invitation, this freely given gift that is grace. So like I said in the beginning, you are very wise to enter into that parable of the wise and the foolish virgins to try to find this idea of the disposition to move from the Palm Sunday and Lazarus Saturday and to turn towards the passion of our Lord because in his first coming, that is his expression of love. See what I have done for you. That's why in what he does is suffering, it's not first a question of justice. It's a question of love. I have come. I have extended the hand of friendship to my very people that I have prepared for 15 centuries. And you smack my hand away. And in fact, not only do you smack my hand away, you condemn me. That's why the parable of the fig tree that is read, this follows immediately after the Palm Sunday episode in the Gospel of St. Matthew. And you notice that what our Lord finds on the fig tree, it's filled with leaves. I mean, it's certainly alive and it's abundant and there's lots of greenery and there is no fruit. To use that comparison of no fruit on the tree is to have the lamp empty of the oil of good works. Both of them are an expression of the fruition, literally fruition, the fruit of receiving love for love. And so at this beginning of this pivotal moment of entering into the week of the Passion, let us ask our Lord 
to reveal that love to the very core of our being so that he sets us on fire. But that love is what propels everything that we do in our lives. And in doing so, we will be set inflamed and a great desire for that revelation on the last day, which is during our whole movement, the harbor of our salvation, where we will find peace, where we will find strength, and where we find that calmness of conscience and serenity, as it says in our prayers this evening. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. O Christ the Bridegroom, we come to meet you. O Lord, O Lord, open up for us. Fill our hearts, O Lord, with the light of your kingdom. We ask you, we beg you, knock at your door. O Lord, our Lord, open for us. Fill our hearts, O Lord, with the light of your kingdom. We heard your voice, O good shepherd, for the lambs of your flock are your door. O Lord, O Lord, open for us. Fill our hearts, O Lord, with the light of your kingdom. O Lord, O gate of mercies, open to those who knock and ask for your saving grace. Lead us to the light of your eternal kingdom. We are the children of your holy church, and with our lamps lit, we come to the church as to the harbor of our salvation. We offer glory to you now and forever. All right, so we'll do the same thing on two sides. Praise to him that night he saved us from our burdens. Trials and pain are over. Let us come and meet at the harbor, the living treasure, the true peace. That night the light covered earthly beings and heavenly ones. They all praise the Son of Light. The maker of light in the world, he brings safety to the harbor. At night, the whole universe was inundated by light. Praise to the Son of Justice who shines in his church. His Spirit generously poured his love into harbor. Praise to you, O Son of the Father, for your passion. Praise to you, O Father of truth. Praise to you, O Spirit of holiness. You are one God, a trinity. You are light most exalted above all lights. Lord, have mercy on us. In the middle of the night they cry, Wake up, the bridegroom is coming. In their hands they hold lamps filled with oil. Like a warm light is their face, And their heart like a burning flame. Moriolita, 
foolishness has its own heart face, an empty lamp void of oil. The heart of the foolish virgins trembled at the waking call. O Lord, our night has no end, nor our foolishness. Do not let us meet you with empty lamp. Moran In a lamp in need of oil, light dies. To the needy heart, open, O Lord, your treasure. And may my lamp, during the night of my life, remain lit that is immersed in light. I may praise you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us adore. Thank you. and compassion. In the abundance of your grace, you give rest to the weary, relief to those who struggle, and support and protection to those who seek refuge in you. O harbor of safety and salvation, save all those who in true faith reach the harbor of your holy church. We offer you glory and thanksgiving to you now and forever. 